Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Gig Harbor Market Update. We're going to be talking about real estate numbers in Gig Harbor here that just came out. It is the first week of June so we just, that's what we do around here. The first week of every month we talk about real estate numbers because that's right when they're uh, fresh out of the frying pan I guess. And um, my eyes are up here by the way so I asked uh, my stylist today for the dirty Frenchman and that's what I ended up with. So uh, anyway let's get into the numbers. Actually before we get into the numbers I want to um, address something I said in last week's email and uh, it's because of the data was lying to me. So let's get into uh, what the real numbers are and uh, I did some sleuthing to see exactly how the numbers are calculated and why the Northwest MLS is steering us wrong. So let's, let's look at that real quick. Now before we get into the latest and greatest numbers, I do want to apologize for a mistake that I made that uh, I guess I wasn't aware that Northwest MLS doesn't actually do math right. And so let me explain. So last week's email, which was in the month of May, I was forecasting that we'd hit 300 new listings in June and July. As I was looking back at the data, it looked like there were pretty you know, strong trends that would suggest that. And it turns out here, that you can see, I don't know if you've seen that on your screen if you're looking at a on a mobile device, you probably can't see it, but it says here, May of 2023, we had 257 listings. Now, this is a three month rolling data. Now, if you look at what rolling data is, a rolling average is supposed to be the sum of data over time, and here's the important part, divided by the time period. So, what does Northwest MLS do? Well, here it says for May, there were 257 listings. Now let's go to a monthly data. So this is taking each single data point, raw data of the month, which means we have a lot more noise. It's not as smooth and you can't extrapolate uh, trends from it as well. But let's, let's, uh, oh, I already, <laughs> I already spoiled the picture if you can see it that. But basically we have 106 listings in May. We have 79 in April and then 72 in March. So that's our three months worth of data. So we have, 257 listings. The same amount of listings that supposedly we had in May. So, what the Northwest MLS should have done, if it is in truly three, uh, if it's a three month rolling day, they should have divided by three. There is our listing, new listing amount for the month of May, if it was indeed a rolling average. So, this is, that's a mistake I made. So what does that mean? Uh, let me explain to you uh, going forward what it means if we do hit that uh, 300 range here. So we're gonna do some weird math here. <laughs> I'm gonna go backwards. By, okay, let's say we are gonna hit, we're gonna use Northwest MLS's faulty data and we're gonna plug in our own data. So I was forecasting 300 new listings. So far in May we have 106, right? And then we have 79. That means we need 150 new listings in June to get us into that 300 uh, new listing, <laughs> it's weird for me to say now, uh, that, that um, basically to follow the trend line that this graph is telling us is gonna happen. So we're looking at a, quite a fair few uh, new listings, so that would put us above uh, the months of May. So this month we should be getting more listings than last month. Now here's the interesting thing. Now let's say we do get 115 listings, and then we have our, our month of May, which gets us at 106. And now let's subtract, if we wanna be above that 300 mark into July, so giving us that nice round top, we actually, let me divide, I minus. We only need 79 new listings in July to get us above the 300 mark. So it actually, even though, 79 listings would put us back here into April numbers, it would still look like we were on the high trajectory here in July. So I don't know if that makes sense. But the fact that this is an aggregate of three month rolling, we can actually be rolling over quicker and still appear that we're you know, in the, the high range of the year. So that's what I wanted to correct. So, let's <laughs> say, uh, in the month of July, uh, this, sorry, this month in June, we're going to probably get around 150 new listings. Hopefully, that's the that's the goal here. And in July, it can be anybody's guess uh, as all we need is above uh, 79. So uh, that kind of skews what I was forecasting in the trends. But let's just stick for June. So that's sorry, that's it. It's a long ex exposition here on uh, me apologizing about. I'm not understanding their data set and having to actually do the math to understand what, what they're doing <laughs> since uh, 
they don't seem to be understanding what rolling average is. All right, let's get into the real numbers of June, and we're gonna be seeing how the, oh, sorry, this is June. We're gonna be going into May's numbers because that's what we have access to. So let's look what happened during the month of May and how the spring season is now slowing down and transitioning towards the summer here. All right, now to get into the latest and greatest data for Geek Harbor, let's start by looking at everyone's favorite subject, which is median sales price, to answer the question, how much does it cost to buy a house in Geek Harbor? Well, of course, every real estate agent will say it depends, but it depends. <laughs> but let's start looking by the median sales price because that is, um, I guess, the cost of the median house. So if you're looking at like, what is the typical house in Geek Harbor? How much does it cost? Well, this is the answer to that. All right, so we can see here on a monthly uh, data point, um, it's pretty jaggedy, and that's because this um, looking at monthly data introduces a lot of noise. So each individual house can have uh, a larger impact on what happened during that specific month. So if a bunch of waterfront homes come online, uh, that'll impact the data. So I don't really like to use the monthly data when it comes to uh, determining the, what the price is. We can look at the 12 month data, which is uh, looking at, it's more of a lagging indicator, but it shows that we have reached a peak here and back in March and we've declined in the median sales price ever since and is now showing us that we're at $750,000 for the median sales price in Gig Harbor. And that is slightly up from a year ago when we were at seven forty-five. dollars So we've gone up $5,000 uh, since last year. But you can see back, let's see, this is 23, so this is one, two, three years ago, we were in that half a million dollar range. Wow, we've come up a lot, $200,000 in just a couple of years. I mean. Phenomenal. So even if we keep going down a little bit, I mean, people will still have a lot of equity in their houses unless you bought, you know, since 2020, 20, sorry, 2022. Now the 12 month data rolling set, uh, <laughs> the rolling 12 month data set shows one thing. Now let's look at what the six month data shows. So the six month data actually shows that we've gone up in price. So we were here at 720, which is the, it's funny looking at the 12 months. So it says the low of this year was 720 and back in March, and we've gone up since then. So it's weird looking at rolling 12 month, which says March was our peak. <laughs> it's just interesting. That's why I like looking at multiple data sets. So here it says we continue to go up, which is, I think that's what it feels like when you're like living real estate. I don't, it doesn't feel like we've gone down. Our month, this month has just been crazy. The houses have been just flying off the shelves. I'm mean, looking at the three month rolling data set. Uh, we've exploded from when I said this was a low of 700,000 back in March. I said this is the low and it was, and but I did not expect this sort of movement in one month. So we went from 700 to 785 essentially. And so that's $85,000 in one month. That's incredible. And we've flatlined since then. So interestingly enough, we are still down from a year ago. So May of last year, we saw 822,000 for the median sales price in Gig Harbor. Now, when we look at a month, so I don't really put a lot of weight in the month, but we see that here in May, we've actually gone down from 830 to 740. So that was, that's quite the fall. That's what, so $90,000 almost. Uh, so I expect our next month to come in. I think the sales price will go back down, uh, somewhere maybe 780 range. Uh, but I think we were gonna start tapering down again here as we enter summer and then autumn. So that's why I, I see these, this kind of rolling over here. So that's where we are. Uh, take your pick of what you think the median sales price is. I think 750 is probably a, a decent figure, and, uh, but that's, that's really what the sales price can show us. Now let's go on to new listings, which we already explored, but let me just go over it just in case you, know, you want to know more about it. Uh, basically, May, we're at 106 new listings, which is great. I think June will see 115 new listings. So somewhere in um, this little Bart Simpson graph over here, if you can see that in the middle of your screen. Uh, let me take my face away. Oh, Ooh, hey, here we go. Uh, Bart, this Bart Simpson graph over here, so I, I see it kind of hitting around there and then turning over. Uh, so that's the peak of the new listings I think we'll get for the rest of the year. So, uh, yeah, so that's more inventory coming online, which is good news for buyers. And I'll talk about buyers here in a moment. But first, let's look at uh, uh, <laughs> days on market, which is quite the phenomenon here. 
So when interest rates really kicked up, we had almost 60 days on market, two months to sell a house. Now we have seven days to sell a house. That's the kind of turnaround we've had in this market. It's been a whiplash. And um, just to put this in perspective, what is seven days? Well, during the COVID frenzy, we saw about five days on market. And that was maybe influenced by real estate agents who put houses on the market on Thursday and had offer review dates uh, on Monday or Tuesday. So, okay, maybe that's a little, but that's not gonna really change. So let's look at a, uh, let's see, so, okay. Housing does come in different sizes. Usually the lower the size of the house, the cheaper it is because you're buying less house. Now, if the house is on waterfront, yeah, I know it can be more expensive, but for the most part, this 1500 square foot or less means a, a lower priced house. So let's see how quickly a lower priced house is selling. Four days. Let's see how much, it, how long it took to sell that house in COVID frenzy, six days, five days, four days. So we're actually selling houses currently in this price range between four and six hundred thousand dollars in the exact same time it took to sell a house during COVID. Why is this? This is because interest rates have shrunk uh, the uh, the price range of what a lot of buyers who are getting mortgages can afford. So now all these buyers have got really crunched for how much purchasing power they have for a house and are all now looking within the same price. So that puts a huge pressure on buyer competition and the few amount of listings that do come in because as you can see the median sales price in your harbor is 700 and something, let's say 750. So we don't have a lot of inventory that comes out in the five to six hundred thousand dollar range. So there's a huge frenzy when it comes to those houses because you know they're few and far between. Now let's look at what happens to the houses more in the 752, I wouldn't say 1.2 million dollar range. So that that's essentially between 1500 and uh, 2500. So for this uh, this range, we're up to two weeks it takes to sell a house. I'm, I don't know. I'm motioning to the camera since the camera's off. <laughs> But here it takes almost two weeks to sell a house of that uh, size and that price range. And the same can be really said for this price range. Uh, this is when we get to slightly higher price points. So they take a little less time and that's because as we can see when we go to the 2,500 square foot or more, this is the high price range house. We're talking about, you know, one and a half to, or higher. They take less than a week to sell. So what we have right now are two strong buyer pools. So basically we have uh, the four to five, four to six hundred thousand dollar range buyer pool, and then we have the 1.5 and more uh, all cash. Uh, let's buy this house, lickety split kind of buyer pool. So that's just an interesting dynamic of the two type of uh, buyer pools that we have that are looking for a home. And then the people in between are like, oh, let's take our time. Uh, there's not a lot of competition, and uh, <laughs> so it's it's great if you're a buyer looking in between the 700 and the 1.2 million dollar range. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I want to talk about. Days on market crazy how quickly they're flying off and the houses are flying off the shelf it blows my mind <laughs> anyway let's take a look at inventory now inventory is represented by month supply of inventory pending and let me remove my face here so you can see what's happened recently uh, so the latest and greatest data shows that we're now oh all sizes at 1.3 months of inventory uh, for the month of May. Uh, we haven't really moved much in the last four months, so we've been covering, hovering those slightly above one month of inventory. Uh, yeah, one point something months of inventory. Uh, this means that if all houses were to not come on the market anymore, so what we have is what we got, it would take about 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 months to, to sell them to the uh, current buyer pool. The last time we had a, oh, I would say, an what a balanced market it would be back in 2014, which is almost 10 years ago. Uh, so that was the last time we had uh, a supply and inventory between five and six months worth. And that's what is con typically considered a balanced market. That's when sellers and buyers are pretty much on an even playing field and when it comes to negotiations. Um, since then, I mean, it's been just a seller's market. Honestly, there haven't been enough houses that are being built and people are moving out and people are moving in. So it's just a supply demand issue and I don't see it being solved anytime soon. So uh, good luck for the people wanting to move in. Um, there's a lack of housing and a lot of buyers. 
and it's a really attractive place to live. Uh, so I'm not surprised to see such a low inventory. But it's it's pretty bad for people looking to buy a house right now, honestly. Uh, we're still not down at the COVID levels where we had um, houses just, you know, even we had 0.3 months of inventory. So we're, we're still higher, so there's been some, a breath of relief, but again, this is for all houses. If we look at the lower houses, I mean, well, I guess they're all pretty evened out now. I wonder if monthly data will show a different thing. Yeah, 0.8 months of inventory. So yeah, for those cheaper houses, I mean, we have less than a month of inventory. So not surprised to see that. So um, yeah, so that's what I can say for inventory. It's, it's going to continue to be a, a crunch. But I did allude that in June we will see more listings and I don't see many more buyers entering, entering the arena for the rest of the year. So we should see inventory continue to tick up slightly. And I think um, that's what to expect going forward in the short term. All right, uh, with that said, let's look at, uh, I think anything else besides, let's look at shows per listing. I think that's usually a, a good way to judge how much traffic there is going through each listing, which, indicates how much buyer activity there is. So let's do all, uh, let's make sure I have all my bases covered here. All okay, so here we go. Uh, monthly, let's go to rolling three month for the time being. Uh, so we've flatlined here since March. We've almost to eight uh, shows per listing. So each listing gets um, you know eight interested buyers and looking, so this data set only goes back three years. So even though I have 10 years up here, uh, it only goes back to 2019, but I think this, this data is skewed. I don't think we had that few uh, people walking through. So it's irrelevant. So basically what I have is COVID data here to go off of. And we can see here in March of both years is when the peak of uh, traffic was, buyer traffic. And since each March, it was tapered off. March tapered off. So the fact we have a slight bump, whatever, but I can see this start tapering off as we go into June, July, and we just uh, have uh, buyers slowly getting phased out. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, you know, that's just seasonal, seasonal stuff, right? And if we look at, uh, let's just look at monthly data. Uh, yeah, so not too much has changed. So, but uh, yeah, I think uh, this will, uh, the new inventory will spread our buyers a little thinner and reduce the amount of buyers going through. So, but we're still probably going to be within that, uh, the seven to high sixes in uh, in June. Oh, that was a, a lot to talk about. Anyway, hope that was insightful. That was a glazing rated data. Well, if, um, if you have any further questions, reach out to me. My information is down below. Go to my website. You can contact me directly. And that said, it's a beautiful day outside. It's almost the weekend, so uh, go enjoy it. And if you're not in Gig Harbor, you should come here visit. It's a perfect time to really walk about and uh, enjoy the area. So uh, I'll see you uh, next week. All right, take care and the show mustache go on. That was really bad, sorry about that. Anyway, later.